We are talking to His Excellency the President, Comrade Idi Mnangagwa, on the occasion of Independence 2019, and hope you are enjoying this exclusive interview. Your Excellency, the issue of transparency, a new way of doing things in the new dispensation, but what informs, what motivates this new model of leadership and governance? Well, we have been in isolation for nearly two decades, about 18 years or so. Um, we don't think that was a healthy state of affairs. It's not of our own creation. Uh, we had a choice between uh, going ahead, moving ahead with our land reform, or desist from implementing our land reform in order to be accepted in the Commonwealth or the nation at, uh, at large. But um, because, as you realize, our war of liberation was based on the principal uh, grievance of land. So we had to implement uh, the imbalances relating to land. So when we were faced with that choice, um, when there was the Commonwealth meeting in Abuja, and, uh, and, and, and it was said that uh, if we do not desist from implementing, if we, de if we continue uh, implementing the land reform, we will be kicked out of the Commonwealth. But if we stop uh, the land reform, we will remain in the Commonwealth, and the Commonwealth will assist us in a proper manner of land uh, uh, changing hands. We had 10 years experience where land had to change on a willing buyer, willing seller, and nothing significant ever happened. So we chose to get what belonged to us. The Commonwealth does not belong to us. But the land in Zimbabwe actually belongs to the people of Zimbabwe. So we said, for us to be in the Commonwealth uh, fully independent, let us get our land. So we said, the club can go talking and having tea, and we get our land. So we got our land. That resulted in our being isolated, uh, sanctions being posed on us, and so on. So under the Second Republic, we have said the question of land is now behind us. Let us now re-engage and engage with the entire uh, family of nations. And to do so, we have to, be, to open the doors and say, okay, we are going to have a general election coming. In the past, we only allowed uh, SADC and the AU to observe our elections. So we decided, no, this time around, the entire world community is free to come and observe our elections. The SADC, the AU, the United Nations, uh, the Commonwealth. You are free to come and uh, observe our elections. Uh, even countries outside uh, uh, um, what I've mentioned, international organizations, we opened up to come and I mean, observe our elections. And uh, as a result of that, actually there was nothing uh, uh, which is frightening to be observed. It's actually a good thing to have, people to have your, your elections observed. And this time around, we appealed that we need a peaceful, non-violent election campaign. We appealed to all political parties, and I'm happy to say all political parties this time around did their campaigns peacefully. And this time around, there were no areas which, like in the past, this is a no-go area, it's ZANPF, this is no-go no -go area, it's MDC. No, the entire country from Zambezi to Limpopo, Mutare to Plum 3 was open for anybody to uh, campaign new wave of uh, freedom, some of the things that were considered taboo in the First Republic are now being talked about freely, anywhere, nationwide. One of those key issues mm. is the issue of devolution. Are you happy with progress so far? Look, the issue of devolution is in our constitution. The history of our constitution is that um, we had an country outreach program where we had 26 items to be debated and that we had to gather the wishes of the people. 
among the wishes of the people which came to be part of the constitution was the concept of devolution. Uh, it did not mean that all political parties agreed with that concept of, of uh, devolution. It was a national issue. Different political parties have different views on the issue of devolution. But at the end of the day, if you're a constitutional government, a constitutional nation, and you pursue constitutionalism, you obey your constitution. This is how we approach the constitution. So we have the provisions in the constitution that provides for devolution. I personally believe it is good. It uh, allows the devolution of power from the center going to the provinces and also uh, directing the various provinces to look at themselves, interrogate the resources which they have, their strengths and weaknesses, and on the basis of that, modernize, grow the economy on those bases, see the level of their GDP as a province or as a region. So that way, there will be competition for development rather than a system where everybody says, uh, Harare, 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 and they do nothing about what resources they have at their own, uh, at the local level. So I'm happy that um, uh, 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 the fact that I, I, I support devolution, the constitution also s bids us to uh, obey the constitution and implement uh, 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 devolution. And we have put some money to deal with the priority areas which they themselves as a province, as a locality, as a local communities, think are priorities for their area. Yes, the government looks globally over the entire country and says, uh, we think this is a priority in Manikaland, this is a priority in Mashula and the East, this is a priority in Mat North. But the people of uh, Mat North themselves, given a budget, they may have priorities different from those structured or crafted by the central government. And you have taken the issue of Gukura Wundi head on, meeting representatives of over 60 non-governmental organizations in Matebelen region last month and the government announcing key initiatives over the issue. Do you see this kind of action bringing closure, finality to this issue? What I'm happy about was th is that um, the Matebrene Collective approached me and said they wanted to discuss with me the issues of Gokura Windy, the issues of um, uh, lack of development in the Matebele and so on. And they agreed. These are citizens of this country. I went there. I discovered that actually uh, it was unfortunate that in the past we did not entertain uh, such dialogue. It's a very useful. Uh, we learned a lot from that dialogue. And in fact, the differences are not critical. There are issues where we can discuss and together craft a way of moving forward. Uh, we discovered that, uh, in fact, they are not saying they don't want the government of the day. No, they are saying the government of the day is failing us in this area, in that area, in that area. So this is a platform where government can explain itself be able to uh, uh, appreciate the needs and priorities of the areas. Now, the question of Gukura Wundi, I, we don't see, and personally, I don't see anything wrong in debating it on television, in newspapers, on the platforms. Let us debate it. And we w it was so uh, uh, open debate that at the end of the day, in fact, we, we, we feared nothing. There was nothing to fear about the debate. Actually, it's critical that uh, we, we, we have that debate. And as a result of that uh, uh, conversation we had, we have created a matrix of uh, implementation of ideas, which I have already sent out, uh, with to deal with issues that were raised. Some of the issues that could have been resolved a long time back. And th there's not a single issue, in my view, that cannot be discussed and a way forward uh, 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 crafted. Does that mean your re-engagement issue is both internally and outside the borders of Zimbabwe. I don't know which aspect you are talking about. Gukura Hunde has nothing to do with uh, other people. It is it's an internal issue which we must discuss as Zimbabweans. It has happened among ourselves. We must discuss with it. But the question of engagement, re-engagement, it relates to engagement is we must engage every single member of the na uh, family of nations. We re-engage with those nations who are disengaged with Zimbabwe as a result of our land reform. They disengaged. We're saying, let us re-engage like the EU, like the Americans, and like the British. 
But I said, let us re-engage. Why are you afraid of us? We are here. We are a peaceful country. Uh, we, our people have no quarrel with your people. But we get, we get to wonder when uh, people say in Mutoko, a headman in Mutoko is busy distributing land to the villagers there. And there's somebody in California or in Scotland gets angry. Uh, such things we don't think are proper. Over one and a half years now, in the new dispensation, people must be thinking about monitoring and evaluation of what government has been done, it has been doing to lay the foundation for achieving your vision, vision 2030, achieving an upper middle class economy by 2030. Are you happy with progress? In government, things don't happen overnight, certain events. It's a Progress process. is a process. What is critically important from my point of view is to have a policy and a program that deals with challenges our people are facing. Challenges which need to be uh, resolved to better the lives of our people. A program to industrialize. However, as in Zimbabwe, we are in a unique position where even in Sadiq, we have fallen behind by 18 to 20 years uh, as a result of these sanctions. So we are saying we need to leapfrog to catch up with the rest of developing countries in our region, on the continent and the country, I mean worldwide. Those are developing countries. We have left us behind. But to do so, we need to open ourselves we cannot do it on our own financial resources internally. Yes, to, to a great extent, we need to mobilize resources domestically to uh, uh, support our vision to move forward. But if we open, then we need to attract global capital to come and assist us to leapfrog and modernize our country. This is how we look at uh, where we are going. This is how we think we can uh, uh, meet the target.